Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and uh, welcome to the course on biostatistics and design of experiments. Uh, today we will continue on the topic of uh, regression analysis. I introduced what is regression analysis in the previous class. Uh, once you have collected uh, sufficient data, um, you would have changed uh, many input parameters or uh, factors or variables or uh, um, x's or independent variables as they are called uh, like temperature or pH or oxygen or agitation and then you are measuring your uh, output like biomass um, or product yield, you like to fit a mathematical relation and that is what is called regression analysis. Okay. You can fit uh, one parameter as the independent uh, fitting the observed data that is dependent or you can have two, two independent variables or three and so on actually. Uh, so, uh, initially if you look at how they seem to be related or correlated as we call it. Okay. If um, I plot x that is the independent variable here and I plot the dependent variable on the y axis and if the data appears like this then obviously they are not correlated. Okay. So, when we calculate something called a correlation coefficient it will become almost 0. Um, as it improves you know when you have a good correlation for example. Um, as you can see as x increases y also increases. In such situation you will have a correlation coefficient tending towards 1. Okay. It x increases y also increases. Uh, you can analogous to that you can have a negative 1 also that means as x increases y decreases. So, this type of uh, figures in indicate that the correlation between x and y are extremely good whereas, this type of uh, figure indicates that the correlation between x and y are extremely poor. Um, so, between 0 and 1 the correlation coefficient values will lie and uh, pictorially you can immediately find out if there is, a, there is a relation. Of course, this is valid only if you have uh, one um, independent uh, variable at a time you can plot actually. Okay, One independent variable at a time you can plot and get a pictorial um, visualization. And there are certain mathematical relationship one is called the covariance other is called the correlation coefficient which uh, mathematically tells you uh, how strong is the relation between the x and the y. Okay. Uh, the first one is called covariance, it is a measure of the strength of the correlation between two or more set of random variables. So, if you have x and y I want to see what is the covariance, okay. then we do summation of i is equal to 1 to n, x i minus x bar, y i minus y bar, y bar divided by n minus 1. Okay, that is called covariance. x i minus x bar, uh, y i minus y bar, where x bar is the averages of all the x's, y bar is average of all the y's divided by n minus 1. And you sum it up to all the n data points. Okay. Now, a correlation coefficient, okay, correlation coefficient, sometimes it is called Pearson's correlation coefficient and so on, is nothing but covariance x y divided by sigma x sigma y. Sigma x is the standard deviation for the x and sigma y is the standard deviation for the y. That means, sigma x square is the variance for the x, sigma y square is the variance for the y. So, uh, they are both related. So, correlation is a scaled version of covariance okay? because you will you can have where covariance can be a bigger number whereas, when you do this correlation will always lie between 0 to 1. So, it is very convenient otherwise you can have very large number. As you can see x i minus x bar, y i minus y bar, you can have number uh, practically huge. But once you divide it by this, you are sort of uh, making it lie between 0 and 1 only. So, generally correlation is what is uh, looked at and as I so showed in this picture, you can see the correlation coefficient uh, is varying between 0 to right up to 1 between the x and the y. Okay. Now, uh, so this correlation coefficient as I said is also called Pearson's correlation coefficient. So, it is um, nothing but covariance of x y is this no? and that is also represented as s x y. s x y means x i minus x bar multiplied by y i minus y bar summation. 
x bar is the averages of x, y bar is averages of y. Now, um, as I said this is the standard deviation for x, standard deviation for y. So, this is nothing but square root of s x x, s x x means instead of a y you put all x, s y y means instead of x you put all y. So, this is nothing but square root of summation of x i minus x bar square okay, summation of y i minus y bar square okay, standard deviation and then uh, there will be um, okay, <coughs> this is called the Pearson correlation coefficient. So, Excel also has uh, the function called Pearson uh, uh, R s q that is square of the correlation coefficient or coril that gives you array 1 and uh, array 2. If you give the array 1 and array 2, it will calculate the correlation coefficient. So, bo bo all of them have uh, this type of uh, uh, functions. For example, if you look at Excel, um, um, so I put in some numbers say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I get uh, some y values, I'm just randomly putting it. So, we can say what is the correlation coefficient between these, coral it is called okay, this comma this, oh sorry, equal to um, this comma this. So, the correlation coefficient is 0 0.95. That means, it is a good correlation almost tending towards 1 like uh, in this graph you know, it is very high. Um, so, even when you plot them also you will be able to see them. I hope you all know how to do plotting in Excel. We can use a scatter plot. Okay. Um, so, you can see this right. So, data as uh, x increases, y increases, it is like a straight line. Okay, so, this number gives you the whole thing and then R s q, uh, R s q square of the Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay. That is square of 0.95, square of 0.95, that is 0.95 into 0.95, that gives you 0.91. This is called R square. Generally, we use this as when you are fitting uh, um, data use this. This is the top one coral we use when we are trying to just see the correlation coefficient. So, both are uh, um, interrelated with each other. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so, this is called uh, the Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay. Um, okay. Excel also has these uh, things. Uh, type of regression models, like I said we can have uh, any type of regression models. Um, if you know the physics, you can have say some sort of an exponential decay, drug release uh, from a from a drug carrier um, may follow exponential decay model, uh, sine waves you can have cos and sine or you can fit uh, this type of uh, binomial relationship simple regression B naught plus B 1 x, B naught plus B 1 x 1 plus B j x 2 or you can have single parameter cubic x square x cube like this or you can have two parameters x 1, x 2, then x 1, x 2, x 1 square or you can have large number of parameters. So, um, different types of models are possible and uh, finally, the idea is to get all these constants, these b's are all called constants actually. Okay, so, what you are doing is you are trying to reduce, minimize the sum of squares of the error. What is the sum of squares of the error? Um, the data measured and what the model predicts. So, model predicts, suppose I write this as a model for any given value x, it will predict a y. So, that is the model predict, this is the measured value, take a square and if you summation that is called the error and uh, you want to minimize the error. So, this is like an optimization problem where you are trying to minimize the sum of squares of this error. This is called the error because this is y measured, this is the y model and the different square uh, summation is called either error or residual, these are the two names for that actually. So, if you have x and y, you are trying to fit a st uh, straight line y equal to a x plus b and that means you are trying to find a and b. So, that y i minus a x i plus b whole thing square i is equal to 1 to n is minimized. So, this is basically it is almost like a um, optimization problem 
okay. Um, okay, that is what you are doing actually, you, you calculate A and B so that this is equal to um, 0. Okay. And now, Excel has uh, two commands, one is called slope, other is called intercept. Okay, this is the slope, this is the intercept to find out the slope and intercept for the x and y data. Suppose so, let us take the same data, I have a x and I have the y. So, if I want to calculate slope, so I just say slope, this is the x data and this is the y data. So, I, this is the slope of this line and if you want to get the intercept, So, this is the x data, this is the y data, that is the intercept. So, it is having a neg negative sort of intercept because it goes uh, right down, sorry, intercept C2, C2, slope and intercept. So, we can also fit it using uh, add a trend line command and uh, we can calculate uh, display equation on the R square and close. Okay. So, it gives you slope and intercept. Oh, okay. So, I have made a mistake here I think. Um, so, the slope command through the given data set. So, I have to give the y's first. Okay, that is the mistake I made, I have to give the y's first, I have to give the x's later, so it gives you 2.4, okay, intercept, please remember I have to give the y first and the x later, so 17.6. So, um, this is the slope, this is the intercept, so this is the slope and this is the intercept. So, you can use the excel command slope and intercept to calculate, okay, you can use the slope and intercept to calculate the slope and intercept of a data point. So, uh, do not forget you need to give the y's first and then the x, whereas for the correlation it does not matter whether you give the x first or y later, but um, interestingly I do not know why they want the y's first and then the x's later. So, um, if it is a linear regression that means if you are trying to fit a linear data it is very simple, we can use the slope command or intercept command or even I showed you the graphics we can just draw a graph and then we can say draw trend line, find out equation. So, um, Excel can very well do. Of course, there are many softwares, hundreds of softwares, commercial softwares on payment basis which can do all these fancy things actually, it is not a big deal. Okay. Okay, so, you have to give slope uh, the uh, y first then the x later, intercept also you give there. So, if it is a least, um, if it is a second order like a x square plus b x plus c, okay, so um, then you are minimizing y i minus a x square plus b x i plus c. Okay. Um, I think uh, you can do that also um, in Excel. Okay, we can uh, once draw this, but uh, you cannot calculate it as slope and intercept, but we can draw it and we can try to fit uh, um, a second order or higher order type of uh, polynomial in Excel also. Uh, so, what are the steps in regression? Uh, we have to st specify what should be the regression model, linear or quadratic, perform the regression analysis okay, and then compute the statistics. There are many statistics like R square, R square adjusted, R square predicted, we will come to that and compare predicted value with the actual value. Okay. For example, um, like I said, uh, it gives you an idea about the error. Um, what is error? Summation of um, y calculated my y, y um, actual square. Okay, so, uh, error should be minimum, so it gives you an idea about that um, and if uh, the fit is not good, we can transform it, we can take logarithm of the data, okay, especially uh, if you look at uh, drug discovery, um, normally the concentrations uh, you are using is in millimole or micromole um, and the response could be some activity. So, normally they take a logarithm of the concentration because uh, millimole or micromole may be very small number. So, when you take logarithm you can bring it down to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 that sort of thing. So, 
most of the drug response curves will have logarithm uh, for the drug concentration. Then identify which terms are important. Suppose if you are fitting a multilinear uh, relationship, okay. Suppose you are fitting a multilinear relationship. Some terms may be very important. Some terms may not be important. So you can identify which are very important, and you can also plan whether there are any insignificant terms which can be omitted. Okay. There could be some terms which may have very very small uh, um, absolute value. Uh, then you can remove that. And then again redo the regression model until you get a good regression model. Good means the error should be minimal, the statistics should be quite high. Uh, all these generally vary between 0 to 1, so higher the number better is supposed to be your uh, fit. Okay. So, in matrix term this is what it is all about, let us not go too much into that. So, if you want, if you are trying to calculate the A and B, um, that is suppose the slope and the intercept. Uh, if you look at it uh, from calculus point of view, we are integrating with respect to say B or integrating with respect to A and then you are equating it to 0. So, when you do that, we will get an equation for B and for A it is very simple okay? so, because um, uh, A plus x B is equal to y, so it is very simple. Okay? Uh, so, suppose we have 4 factors x1, x2, x3, x4 and uh, we want to fit a quadratic fit. That means, uh, it will have uh, A plus B x 1 plus C x 2 plus C x 3 plus C x 4 uh, plus uh, D and then plus um, that is A plus B x 1 plus C x 2 plus D x 3 plus E x 4 and then F x 1 x 2 uh, G x 1 x 3 H x 1 x 4. Uh, i x 2 x 4, j x 3 x 4, k x 3 x 4 okay? and then uh, like that if you and then uh, you do that uh, x 1 square, x 2 square, x 3 square, x 4 square. What will happen is you will have 1 for constant, 4 for the x 1, x 2, x 3 the main effect, 6 for the, in, the 2 level interactions and then 4 constants for the quadratic. This all adds up to 15. 1 plus 4, 5, 6 for 15 and um, you have got only 15 data points. So, there are no um, error degrees of freedom at all, it will become 0. So, if you try to fit that sort of uh, uh, data, then of course, uh, you will get very good fit uh, because there is no degree of freedom at all. So, you better be watching out, you need to have um, enough degree of freedom for the error, do not forget that. Okay? So, depending upon how many constants you have. Um, and then depend, uh, so subtract that from the total data points you have and check whether the degrees of freedom is reasonably good. Okay? Otherwise, your fit, uh, you cannot rely on the fit. You may end up having 100 percent fit, but in fact, um, the error does not have a degree of freedom. Okay, so, there are, there are many um, terms such as R square, R square adjusted, R square predicted which give you an idea about the quality of the fit between the x and y. The first one is called r square and this is equal to 1 minus sum of squares of the error divided by sum of squares, total sum of squares. Uh, this is equal to 1 minus, uh, what is the sum of squares of the error I told you, uh, the, this is the uh, okay, predicted, this is the actual, okay, this is the predicted actual. So, this is the error squaring up summation and, and the denominator has the variance for y, y i minus y bar whole square, y bar is the mean of y. This is called r square. Okay. This is like, um, okay. this is uh, as predicted by the model, uh, this is the total variance, this is the total variance as predicted by the model. So, if uh, it becomes 1, that means the entire variance can be predicted by the model. Okay? So, closer to 1, that means large proportion of it could be predicted by the model. Do you understand? So, 1 minus sum of squares of the error that is given by y uh, predicted, sorry, y predicted and y observed square, and this is the sum of squares of the total variance, y a minus y bar square, okay, and 1 minus of that actually. So, generally it will lie between 0 and 1 closer to 1, it means uh, the fit is extremely good, uh, closer to 0, that means it is very poor. 
so the degrees of freedom is number of parameters minus 1 as I mentioned some time back also. So you need to have, uh, uh, you cannot have parameters um, equal to the number of experiments or number of experiments just matching with the parameters in that case you, are, you will not have any degrees of freedom. So if I am going to fit a linear relation like y is equal to ax plus b, you have 2 parameters, if you do only 2 experiments that is not good because your df will be 0. So, you should have done at least minimum 3 experiments, do not forget that. So, but then there is a rule of thumb a number of points should be at least 25 percent more than the number of degrees of freedom. So, if you take y equal to ax plus b, I have 2 parameters okay? um, and um, so the number of points should be at least 25 percent more than the number of the degrees of freedom in the regression model. Okay? So, I have 2, so I should uh, if, even if I do 1 at least 3 or 4 then it is good actually. Next r square is r square adjusted. <coughs> this is 1 minus sum of squares of the error okay, multiplied by n minus 1 divided by sum of squares total sum of squares uh, multiplied by n minus p. n is the number of points, data points and p is the number of terms in the regression model. So, if you have y equal to a x plus b, p will be 2. If you have y equal to a x square plus b x plus c then p is equal to 3. Uh, so, this can be rearranged also 1 minus n minus 1 divided by n minus p 1 minus r square. Okay? So, this model tells you uh, something interesting uh, because you can always add terms and try to improve your r square, but then if you calculate r square adjusted if you add more terms p will become large. So, this will become small. So, this whole term become large. So, 1 minus this whole term will become small. Okay? So, r square adjusted will keep going down although r square will go up. So, p is an indication of um, whether you are doing an overfitting of your um, data. So, r square gives you an first level of uh, uh, data fitting, but r square adjusted takes care of the number of uh, parameters you have in your model. So, it adjusts for that here. So, that is a better indication than r square and if I keep increasing p you will always keep increasing your uh, uh, fit, but then r, r square will increase, but r square adjusted will decrease because of p being here. Okay? That is called adjusted r square statistics. There is something called predicted r square. Okay? So, this predicted r square is an indication of the predictive capability of your model. Ultimately, um, I told you long time back once I have a model I can use it for predicting at different conditions. For example, if I have a model um, yield of the bio uh, of the metabolite as a function of pH and temperature A plus B pH plus C temperature, I do lot of experiments and then um, I get the model for A, B, C. Now, I can use this model to predict what will be my yield of the metabolite at different pH values and different temperatures. So, uh, ultimately I am going to use this model for predicting. So, this r square predicted um, gives you an indication of how good the model is able to predict. Whereas, the remaining uh, previous are, are 2 r square r square and r square adjusted are talking about how good the fit is whereas r square predicted tells you how good the predictive capability of the model. So, how do you do this? What you do is suppose you have 10 points. What you do is you remove one point and fit your model, fit your relationship say y equal to x plus b to, to the 9 points and then using that you try to predict for the 10th point. So, of course, uh, the prediction will not be exact. So, there will be some difference you square it that we call it error. Okay? Then you put that point back, you remove another point and then with a new set of 9 points you fit the fit an equation and then try to predict uh, the value for the data points which was missed out. Again you will get some error, you square it. So, you keep on doing that for each of the 10 points and then you square those errors add up that is called the sum of squares of the predicted understand that is called the sum of squares of the predicted. 
So, r square predicted is equal to 1 minus sum of squares of the predicted divided by total sum of squares. What is this? This is summation of uh, yi minus y bar square. Do you understand how it is done? So, if you have 10 data points, uh, what you do is you remove the 10th point and then fit an equation for the 9 points. Try to predict the y for the 10th point using the equation you have developed and of course, it will not be exact. There is some difference that is error is there, you square it up. Now, you put that pen point back, remove the ninth point and then fit an equation for the uh, remaining 9 points and try to predict the y value for the ninth point. Again, you will get some error, square it up. Like that, you keep on removing one point at a time. Of course, you put other points back and then you find out, try to predict the y at that point using the model and then uh, error is square it up, you add all these errors, sum of squ square of the errors that is called the sum of squares of the error of the predicted divided by the sum of squares of the total that is y i minus y bar square subtract from 1, you will get the r square predicted. This is very stringent r square, it gives you a better understanding of the um, predictive capability of the model. So, if you fit uh, data and generally r square will be high, r square adjusted will be lower and r square predicted will be still lower. So, ideally if I am fitting a model, I expect all these 3 r squares to be above 0 0.6, you know that is a reasonable model especially with the experimental system, okay. Um, if you might, you will never get 0 0.9 on so on for experimental data study. Okay. So, r square will always be high um, and r square adjusted will be lower and r square predicted will be still lower and ideally all these 3 r square should be above 0 0.6. Okay. Then you can be reasonably sure that your model is reasonably good. So, these are the statistics, um, statistic which you need to keep in mind to understand the predictive capability of the model, uh, the uh, fitting of the data and the effect of parameters on the fitting of the data. Okay. Um, once you do the fitting, you look at the residuals, okay. that a residual is nothing but the difference between the uh, predicted and the actual. Okay. Generally, these residuals should be um, random, that means uh, if there are 10 residuals, uh, some of them should be plus, some of them should be minus, it should not be all pluses, all minus then you should be, you are very sure that there is a mistake, I mean there is some catch, there is a problem in your fitting. So, generally it should be normally distributed, um, so we can even do a test for normality to see it. It should not be biased in all pluses, all minuses and also a pattern, you should not get residuals like this, you know it should generally be like this, you know almost some of them small um, positive, some of them small and negative. And also you should not have unexplained outlier, suddenly one of the data, one of the residual is very high. Suppose you have 10 uh, data points, you are fitting it, you are calculating residuals. So, 9 residuals are reasonably small, 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 some of them positive and then one of them is extremely high. Then obviously, there is some problem, we need to really look at it, look at the data point. It is called unexplained outliers. Okay. Then of course, once you have done the model fitting, you need to validate you need to um, see whether it is able to predict for some new axis. Okay. That is very, very important unless you do that, you are not sure the model is good because, because you may be, suppose you have 3 points, you fit uh, x and y, you think it is a straight line, but in reality it could be like this. Okay. So, you do not know. Uh, although you think by looking at these three points, they all fall in a nice line. So, you fit a line like y equal to a x plus b straight line, but in reality uh, it may be going up like this and coming down like this, right. So, you have to be very careful on that actually. So, we need to have a validation, do not forget that, we need to have a validation. That is one point. Another point is you cannot uh, extrapolate because the fit you do is based on the experimental data and you cannot extrapolate from this fit at some other point which is wrong because you are not sure how this graph will change. In some region it could be linear, you may think it is a linear relation, but actually the graph may be going up especially if you look at the biomass, 
exponential growth phase, uh, all those things happen, right? Stationary phase. So, uh, the, whatever region in which you have collected data and fitted, um, you have to be sure you have to use the model only in that range. Be sure about it. Be careful. Okay. Then uh, there is something called leverage. This is very important. I need to talk mention about it. Suppose you have collected data uh, and suppose this is your plot, you have lot, lot of x data collected around this place and there is one x here. Now, you are fitting a line. What is the danger of this? This particular point is leveraging the entire line, slope of the entire line. Suppose if, the, if I have made a mistake in this data collection, the slope will change because of this. Okay? Whereas, even if you make some mistakes here on these points, there will not be much change because you have many points, whereas you have only one point. So, this point leverages your entire slope of this line. So, such an experiment is extremely bad. You should have done at least two experiments. So, even if one of them is partially wrong, um, you are going to take a mean. So, the slope will not change too much. So, the leverage here is only 0 0.5. You have two points leverage is 0 0.5. A leverage of 1 implies that any error in collecting data of this point is going to um, change the slope exactly. Whereas, if you have 2 points and any error you will get only half. If you have many points 3 or 4 then obviously, it will keep going down 1 by 3, 1 by 4. Okay? So, that is very important. So, when you collect data um, it should be well spread out and um, you should not have points which have a very high leverage like this. Watch out. So, how do you change the model to get a better fit? Use a higher order model, you can drop superfluous terms. So, if you have y is equal to um, a plus b x plus c x 2 plus d x square e x uh, 2 square and so on. So, you can look at some of those uh, uh, a b c d e and uh, if some of them are very, very small, you can drop them out. You can use transforms like I said uh, in drug discovery concentrations are always in micro mole which is small 0 0.0001 mole um, and so on. So, you can uh, take a logarithm of that. Okay? Sometimes, you can take 1 by that especially again in drug discovery we use 1 by. Um, so, transformation you can use, use even non-dimensional combinations. Uh, if you are an engineer, you will know things like Reynolds number, you can even take aspect ratio length by width that sort of non dimensional combination that will uh, improve your model fit. So, some of the common problems that one comes across reverse causation, this is a very interesting problem. Okay? So, uh, in Europe and England they used to see lot of stocks, these are uh, birds migratory birds uh, um, observed near the home of new born babies. Okay? So, did these stocks bring the newborn babies? June usually brings a peak in the number of both weddings and suicides, okay? especially um, in the western countries uh, weddings are held during summer time. Okay? So, again suicides are also very high. Um, so, which is the cause? Selective observation, selective memory, my spouse never listens to me. He forgetting that 98 percent of the observations where listening did occur. Okay? Even if the spouse um, had been listening to 98 percent of the time, the 2 percent of the time when the spouse does not listen is what uh, hits the person and uh, that gets embedded in the thought process. So, the person may make a statement my spouse never listens to me, okay? but that could be only 2 percent of the time, the remaining 98 of percent of the time the spouse may be limited uh, listening. Omitted factors. Okay. There could be some other excess, you know. Uh, I may think uh, temperature and pH and carbon is important, there could be a magnesium or some other micronutrient which may be helping the uh, growth of the organism, which is called the omitted factors. Multicollinearity, two or more X's are confounded. Sometimes the X's may get confounded. Suppose I am looking at uh, um, weight, height uh, as independent variable and uh, I am measuring uh, uh, the, the blood glucose level. Okay? Okay? But then uh, weight and height may be confounded, taller people may be more heavier 
then shorter people because height also has some weight involved in it. So, those two x's are confounded. So, unless you adjust for that, then that could be multicollinearity. For example, uh, the blood pressure uh, increasing with the uh, say, um, say lipid content, but then uh, even age, increase in age also may increase the blood pressure. Uh, so, there could be a confounding between the age and the lipid content. So, you need to remove the effect of age so that if you want to study only the lipid content, um, then that is correct. Otherwise, it is getting confounded. So, the multicollinearity is another problem. So, these are common problems you have to keep in mind when you are doing a regression fit. Okay, so, if you are suppose you are fitting like this y equal to b naught plus b 1 x, okay, so the you have the there is a residual that is your uh, sum of squares of the error. Uh, suppose I have 5 data points okay, and I have 2 constants, okay, so the regression will have 1 degree of freedom, uh, 5 data points of so 4 degrees of freedom okay, and uh, residual will have 3 degrees of freedom, so sorry 4, 3, 1. Okay, so, the uh, total sum of squares as I said y i minus y bar, residual sum of squares is equal to y predicted minus uh, uh, y actual square. Okay. Uh, so, from these difference we can calculate, uh, we can calculate the uh, regression sum of squares, okay. residual sum of squares is y data y minus y model square, total sum of squares y data minus y bar square. Uh, okay. uh, so, then we can calculate the uh, mean sum of squares by dividing as you know the degrees of freedom, then we can calculate f value regression divided by residual and then from the f value and f table we can say whether um, the what is the significance whether we can calculate p. The h naught, okay, the h naught is uh, there is no relationship, h h 1 h a is there is a relationship. So, if you get p um, okay, sorry, if you get the f table okay, value my lesser than the f calculated value, obviously we can say there is a relationship. Okay, this is what you do. So, this is there is an ANOVA which is created when you do a regression analysis. Okay, there is an ANOVA which is created when you do any regression analysis, and uh, the uh, there are three sum of squares, one is called the uh, regression sum of squares, which is equal to y. Um, y minus y model, there is a residual sum of squares which is y data minus uh, y model prediction, total sum of squares is y data minus y bar square, y bar bar is nothing but average y. And then you have degrees of freedom, so total degrees of freedom will be total data points minus 1 and um, the regression degrees of freedom, if you have y is equal to linear fit, regression will have 1 degree of freedom, okay. so the remaining will go to the residual and then uh, you calculate uh, f calculated by um, dividing the regression by the residual and then see whether this number is larger than the f table value. Um, if it is larger, then we can say um, there is a the regression relationship is valid. Otherwise, we can we will say that regression relationship is not significant. This is how you do um, the regression uh, analysis and the corresponding um, ANOVA table. Now, uh, suppose this is the regression relationship y is equal to alpha x plus beta uh, linear, alpha is uh, the constant term and beta is your slope. So, beta is given by s x y divided by s x x. Then the alpha is given by y bar minus x s x y divided by x x s x bar. Okay? So, this is how we calculate both the alpha and beta. Of course, uh, I showed you in that uh, Excel. Uh, for slope, we give, give S, SLOPE and intercept, we give INTERCPT. Okay. So, the uh, slope is nothing but SXY uh, divided by SXX and the intercept is nothing there, but this actually. This is how the software also calculates. Of course, um, alpha and beta then will have a, a region of confidence okay, because you, it is not single. Um, So, confidence limit for the slope, okay, this is your slope, sorry, this is your slope x s x y by s x x. So, it is got a confidence limit plus or minus t alpha by 2, okay, s divided by square root of s x x. 
with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. S x x you know and S is the um, standard deviation given like this S square is equal to 1 by n minus 2 S y y minus S x y square divided by S x x. Okay? Understand? So, you understand this this uh, parameter S is given like this uh, S x x is a summation of uh, okay, x minus x bar square okay, that is what it is this for uh, S square and uh, this T alpha 95 percent if you can put with the n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Similarly, the intercept also will have a confidence limit okay, that is given by this type of relationship. Um, the intercept calculated plus or minus 5 by 2 S square root of 1 by n plus uh, x bar square by S x x with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So, slope and intercept because after all uh, the slope and intercept is single value which we have cal calculated, but then uh, as uh, we have been doing we should uh, it is like an x bar you know you remember we used to always give a confidence uh, region limit. Uh, the confidence limit for a point on the regression line ok. So, if I fit a regression line, um, so at any point x naught it will give as alpha hat plus beta hat x naught that means it is predicting the y naught at a given x naught this is a regression line ok. This also will have a confidence because it will not be absolute uh, that is given by plus or minus t alpha by 2 s square root of 1 by n x naught minus x bar square by s x x n minus 2 degrees of freedom t distribution ok. So, if I am predicting a y naught at a value of x naught, so it is not just the slope sorry the slope and the intercept alone there is a plus or minus term coming in here because there is always a confidence limit do you understand 95 percent confidence limit is associated with this and that is given by this. So, you need to consider all these confidence limits for the slope, confidence limit for the intercept as well as con confidence limit for a point on the regression line as well. Okay? So, um, we had completed uh, uh, the regression which is a very important uh, uh, topic. Once you have a data you need to fit the data um, to a linear or a non-linear model with the, the axis as your factors or uh, independent variables and y is your dependent variable. Okay? Uh, we will continue further uh, in a new topic in the next class. Thank you very much.